Orlando, let's dive into logistics. In Europe, there in the EU, EU are more than, I think, 27 countries or something like that. So it's uh, a lot of countries, a lot of border crossing going back and forth there. For merchants that are coming from the US and want to start selling in the EU, that might be a bit of a hassle now dealing with a complete different market. Can you walk me through the biggest challenges that you see online business face when expanding into cross-border European markets? Sure. I think there is one myth that happens when people try and conquer Europe. They believe that we are one country, the European Union, and we are not. Obviously, as you said before, there's 27 countries, uh, member countries there, and there's 27 different, I would say, consumers who have their preferred carrier, who have a different VAT scheme, who have regionalized West or Eastern Europe, South or Northern Europe, different expectations. When they buy online, what would they like to get? Who should be delivering the parcel? How? What payment methods should they use? So there is a lot of, I would say, differentiation here. And what we see from our customers when they come and, and, and want to conquer Europe with us, that we do, and that's obviously part of our service, help them to understand that the person in Italy demands another service, is, is happier with another service than, for example, a person in Austria or a person in, in Poland, right? So it's mm -hmm. understanding, I would say, that the differences of cultures and obviously trying to, to make consumers, as I call them, having a great, happy shopping experience by adapting or embracing those 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 changes or, or these the things they need right mm -hmm. as a fulfillment provider you just mentioned the different countries people have different expectations on payment on how they receive it how do you support that how do you consult your clients in getting the right solution well what, what we'd like or what we do first we have a research team uh in-house and, and we're actually looking every year how the EU, the major, not everyone, not 27 states, though, but at least how the, the major 12 or 14 markets develop, what consumers want, um, what's the new trends, as an example, uh, ecology or, or the payment methods. And what we do throughout the year with our logistics team, we're trying, obviously, if we see a trend that we feel is, is adding value to the customers and to our online traders and their offering, we try to embrace that trend. That means there is sometimes throughout the year, for example, the case that we change a carrier. And that's not because he's cheaper, the carrier, or he's because he, he may have much more offering, for example, parcel locker stations that is now very hot in Europe, whereas in some countries, the carriers don't have that. Or we may see um, that there are other payment methods. As I can give you, for example, an example, if you look at Northern Europe, no one wants to pay cash and delivery. Obviously, who wants, which online trader would like to have that? No one wants it. It costs money. Also, we as an e-fulfillment house, we don't want to have it. But it's a fact that the more south and east you go, you have Greece with about 45% of, of cash and delivery rate. You have Poland, 30%, Czech, 22 Italy, still with around 20%. So, so you need to, to think when you come to Europe, do I also want to attract those 20% or I just want to turn them off because that's the way they like it, whether we like it or not on the selling side, right? So I, I think that's what happens on our side is the constant analysis, what happens in the market. And if we see the trend, we adapt and we obviously embrace it because all that matters here. And I think that's what all the online businesses agree is the shopping experience of the consumer. So if a rude person rings the doorbell, if a damaged or dirty parcel arrives or doesn't even arrive, that's normally the consumer gone. He, she will not return or will leave a one star mark. And I think that's the, the in, in principle, the last mile done by the online trader or by companies like us is actually the first contact of the customer with the e-shop. Apart from seeing the product online and getting it uh, obviously purchased through the cart, it's the physical arrival that is, it's like you walk in a shop. You walk in a shop in a good old time brick and mortar shop and, and the shop is nice and beautiful. That's what is online as well. And then you you, you may have a, a rude or an unfriendly shop assistant. That spoils your shopping experience. And that's pretty much the same when we have customers working with us and we would and obviously we don't but we, when you have a dirty parcels coming or 
or a problem with payment terms that you, you can't really, the person can't really pay by credit card at the doorstep as he or she would like to do. So our job is to embrace that, to, to spot the sense from the nonsense. Not everything that is trending makes sense or is still there in a couple of years. And to, to offer that to our customers as a value added thing, because it's all about gaining customers confidence and trust. And, and that's done by obviously trying to deliver the way they like. Mm -hmm. they, they choose. 